Hi, in this video, I'm going to be doing some tests with these thermostats. If you're interested in the model of the thermostat, there is the imprint of the model and the manufacturer. Now, having a closer look at the thermostat, you can see that there's a terminal here for an electrical connection. The reason for this is this is called a MAP thermostat, and the reason being is that this thermostat is also supported by electronic control. So that means that this thermostat does not only operate from the heat generated from the engine and the coolant flowing through, but also there is a heating element inside to assist in that process. I'm going to briefly explain the mapped function of the thermostat. On this graph, I have three axes. I have the load over here, as you can see, increasing load. Then I have vehicle speed going like that. And then you can see coolant temperature increasing like that. So what we find here is that as the load on the engine increases, we actually want the coolant temperature to be a bit lower, as you can see. Look at that. And if we're having a look at vehicle speed, as the vehicle increases its speed, we also want the coolant temperature to go a little bit lower. So we can see at low speed and low load, the coolant temperature should actually be the highest. And the reason for that is it's got to do with emissions, power efficiency, and fuel efficiency. When your vehicle is in traffic or going very slowly, we would want the thermostat to open at a higher temperature. There you can see 105 degrees. Now that is still quite high. Remember that it's different for different vehicles. And if you have a look, you can see that at the lower coolant temperature, possibly 85 degrees, that's when the engine would be at highest load or highest speed or both. You can see that the response is actually mapped and that is why it's called a mapped thermostat because it follows the map that the manufacturers have worked out to be the most efficient for that engine. So different cars have different maps. So in this case, if you have a 50% load and you are driving at 80 miles per hour, you'd be sitting here. So that would be the ideal temperature for your vehicle. Therefore, the thermostat should aim to get the coolant temperature at this amount. There you can see, call it 100. But if you increase your load by pulling a trailer or going up a hill, what would happen is your engine would generate its own heat. Therefore, there should be an attempt by the thermostat to open earlier in order to cool the coolant to counteract that excess heating generated by the engine. So what we notice is that there is a range of temperatures that the thermostat should operate at, and that is mapped according to the vehicle's characteristics. Right, over here I have a graph which I've called the MAP thermostat cycle. Now on the horizontal axis I've got the time. There I've got time instant 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then on the vertical axis I've got thermostat opening temperature in degrees centigrade. Now in the morning when you start your vehicle, possibly it's at 15 degrees. Look, it really depends on the ambient temperature around the engine. But let's say it starts at 15 degrees. Then as the engine heats up, it will follow a heat curve that looks something like this. Now, it depends on the type of thermostat and the thermostat's operating temperature that will control the engine temperature. So say, for example, your thermostat is calibrated to only open at 105 degrees. Now, many people will consider this quite hot. A lot of vehicles operate at about 93 or 90 degrees centigrade, which also means that their thermostat is calibrated to operate at 90 degrees to allow the engine to stay at about that temperature. A lot of bigger engines and later model cars tend to run a bit hotter because the engineers have found that there is some benefits with fuel efficiency at a hotter temperature. Now, without going into that debate, let's talk about the traditional thermostat. Now, over here, you can see I've got two graphs. Firstly, the traditional, and secondly, the map. Let's first look at the blue line to look at the traditional characteristics. Now, in this case, this thermostat is set or calibrated to open at 105 degrees. So that means that when the coolant passing by the thermostat reaches 105 degrees, the diaphragm of the thermostat will open to allow the coolant to move through towards the radiator in order to cool down the engine to maintain that 105 degrees, which means that it will adjust its opening and closing characteristics of the diaphragm 
to maintain the engine at about that temperature. Obviously, there will be a bit of hysteresis, which means that it won't be exactly 105. Maybe it'll go between 107 and 101. So within that band, the thermostat will control the coolant temperature so that the engine has that uniform heat. So there you can see under all these time instants, the temperature is meant to stay at a temperature controlled by that thermostat. But now let's look at the MAP thermostat. Because driving conditions are unpredictable and the vehicle undergoes different load characteristics while you're driving, it's beneficial to electronically control the thermostat opening temperature. So that means that if you can increase the heat at the thermostat, you can effectively lower the opening temperature of the thermostat. So let's analyze this. In the MAP thermostat, say for example, the vehicle is now going up a steep incline. The ECU knows this because it can measure the load on the engine as well as the throttle response or the amount that the throttle body is open, the amount of flow of fuel, and many other factors that are used to create a map of the vehicle performance. Now, if you are just about to go up a steep gradient, your engine will most probably heat up quite considerably over the next few minutes as you are increasing your load on the vehicle. So if the thermostat was not electronically controlled, what you would notice is that the heating inside the engine would actually increase like that. So what would happen is you would have, I don't want to say overheating, but you'll definitely have an increase in engine temperature if it's not for the thermostat trying to counteract that. So by using clever control based on the map, as I showed in the previous slide, if you could decrease the opening temperature of the thermostat, you can counteract that additional heat which will be generated in the engine body. Remember that coolant surrounds the cylinders, but there is a slight delay between the time that the engine heats up and the time that the coolant responds or the time that the coolant cools down and the engine then cools down. So there's a slight delay. So what happens is if you could electronically reduce the opening temperature of the thermostat by say 15 degrees, look at that you will effectively allow the coolant to cool much earlier, therefore counteracting that additional heat, thus allowing the engine temperature to possibly even stay the same without overshooting. If we have a look at engine temperature, if the engine temperature would have increased because of the increase in the load, by reducing the opening temperature of the thermostat, we could possibly reduce the, the rise of that engine temperature. So instead of it going like that, we now have it like that, allowing for a more stable engine temperature by controlling the coolant temperature based on the opening temperature of the thermostat. Remember that when the thermostat opens, it allows more coolant to travel into the radiator, thus allowing the coolant to cool down because of the radiator fan. So this is the purpose of the MAP function. Now, if the MAP function is not working or it's gone faulty, the thermostat will still operate in the traditional form where the coolant will heat up the, the thermostat body, which will in turn heat up the wax inside, allowing the thermostat to open. But then you won't be able to have this proactive control of the coolant temperature. Remember, it's almost like you're predicting the heating of the engine and by doing so, you can counteract a possible overheating situation. Because if you didn't have this MAP thermostat and your engine was a hot running engine, you could possibly go to 120 degrees, which is now significantly hotter than 105 degrees, obviously wearing out your engine components while with the map function by reducing the thermostat temperature we can control the engine temperature for different driving conditions. I will now show you some practical tests and I will also show you the thermostat on a vehicle and I will do some temperature measurements to demonstrate this. 
I'll quickly show you some fault tracing techniques and thereafter I will demonstrate the operation. On the left I have my multimeter, I'm setting it to ohms. On the right I have my old thermostat, you can see that it is actually stuck in the open position and if you have a look at the new one you, you can see that the new one is closed. Judging from the design of this it looks like this is a fail safe protection in order to not overheat your engine. It seems that something inside is deteriorated, this top seems to have come up a bit and the thermostat is locked in the open position. So the first test is a visual test. Having a look at the thermostat, just notice that this one is open while this one is closed. So that's already a telltale sign of a faulty thermostat. Remember that these thermostats are calibrated for a certain temperature. On the BMWs, for example, the V8s, their engine runs a bit hotter. So these thermostats are calibrated for, I think, about 103 degrees, somewhere there. Definitely hotter than the usual 85, 90 degree engine. Now the next step is to measure the resistance. Now because there is an element inside there, a heating element, we can measure the resistance to see if it's still in place. So I take my leads and I measure across the two terminals. Notice the meter reads 15.3 ohm. This is just a resistive element between these terminals, so it doesn't matter which way you have your leads, that way or that way. Now having a look at the new thermostat, look at the resistance, 15.5 ohms. So in effect, it's actually fine. The element inside is still intact and still working. Now the next step is to see if it still draws current and how much current. That will also give us an indication of the element's condition. So over here I've got two sets of crocodile clips connected to a power supply. The, the power supply is set to 12 volts. I'm now going to use the power supply to measure the current drawn by the thermostat. Again, it doesn't matter in which orientation you connect the leads because there is no polarity on this thermostat. Right, this set of leads is connected to my new thermostat. There it says 12 volts and the thermostat is drawing about 0.7 amps. There you can see 0.71. Here is the old thermostat and you can see the old thermostat is drawing 730 milliamps, 0.73 milliamps. This difference is too similar and I would not consider any fault here. I would say that the resistive element inside is functional. There you can see the currents are pretty much the same. Now, funny enough, while this is connected, I can actually see that the faulty thermostat is actually opening. If you have a look there, you can see that it's lifting this plate and the thermostat is actually opening, even though it is not very hot. And the new thermostat has not moved at all. And I can feel that it's actually hot to touch when I press my finger here at the top. Now, just comparing that to the new thermostat, I can also feel it's hot here. So now it's two minutes later, you can see the plate is open significantly. Look at the top here. It's also shifted quite a bit. While well, look at the new thermostat, nothing has happened. Right, now I'm going to disconnect this. And you can see within a very short time how quickly the plate closes. Now what I've done is I've put them in bowls and I'm about to pour boiling hot water on top of the thermostat. I have not switched on the power supply, so at the moment the leads are connected but no power switched on. Right, so you can see that boiling hot water did not do anything to these two thermostats. Now I'm going to switch on these two terminals and the power supply is going to be 12 volts. And let's see what happens to the thermostats now that it's got the additional power source connected to the thermostat. Taking a quick temperature measurement. Okay, so you can see the water is about 70 degrees. Right, so you can see how the old thermostat, the one that was stuck, is opening very nicely. Although it seems like it's faulty. And look at the new thermostat. It's starting to open, all but very little. So what we're seeing here is that the water temperature is still below the operating temperature of the thermostat. But because of that extra heating element inside, it's actually assisting that wax to melt inside. There's wax inside there. And it's allowing that thermostat plate to open slightly. Obviously, if I heat up the water a little bit more, it'll probably open a bit more. The one on the right is just opening and opening. If I was able to make this water even hotter, maybe 100 degrees as opposed to 70, I might get more action from this particular thermostat. Also remember that these are calibrated. This particular one is for a V8 engine, which with an internal coolant temperature of about 105 degrees is normal for the engine that this thermostat goes in. This thermostat would go in the same engine, so this should be operating in the same way. But having a look at how these two are different, you can see that the old one is 
definitely showing a completely different response. Just having a look at the current draw, you can see that it's stable, not much has changed. Right, so just analyzing the results so far, the correct operation of the thermistor is that it shouldn't open under 105 degrees unless I added the additional current, you know, the voltage source, to heat up that internal element, which will then lower the thermostat's opening temperature. So in this case, the water around the thermostat raised the temperature, but not enough to open the diaphragm of the thermostat. By adding the additional voltage source and allowing current to flow through that heating element, it lowered the opening temperature, therefore the diaphragm opened slightly. The other thermostat, the old one, is clearly broken. You can see that it's not operating at all the way it should. Now notice how as soon as the hot water has gone, you can see that it's closed, even though it was still connected to the power source. Right, what I'm going to do is pour some more boiling water on. And this time it should open more and the reason being is that remember that the first set of boiling water first had to heat up the bowl and the unit. Right, look how much more that thermostat is opening now that the surrounding liquid is hotter as well as having the power supply connected. If I remove the power supply, you can see that it's starting to close even though the water around you is very hot. This one on the other end just keeps opening. If I remove this completely, we'll see that it will go back to its original locked open position. Look at the new thermostat. You can see that it's closed now, even though there's hot water here. The point of this is to show you that this thermostat works as follows. When this temperature of this water exceeded the calibrated temperature to open this thermostat, in this case it would have been about 105 degrees. If I could get this water, possibly by adding some antifreeze and boiling it, I could probably get it to open without the power source. But what the power source does is it assists the car in allowing the thermostat to open even though the coolant has not got to the full operating temperature. All right, so what have we proved here? We've proved that this thermostat works twofold. The first one is through the assistance of current coming through here, you can open the thermostat at an earlier temperature, meaning you can open the thermostat before its calibrated temperature. The next thing is if you do want to test the manual operation of the thermostat, then you will need to get the temperature of your coolant at or above the temperature that is required to open this thermostat manually. Manually means without the assistance of the voltage. One way to increase the temperature would be to try and boil it, like I'm doing here with antifreeze, but you'd still need to increase the temperature of the liquid to equal to or above the thermostat's opening temperature in order to get that diaphragm to move. In this case, I could not get the water above 95 degrees, even though the water was boiling. So the next step is to test it on the vehicle. All right, there you can see the coolant temperature is 72 degrees, which means that the thermostat should not have opened. Right, I'm here in the front of the engine, and I just want to show you a measurement. If I measure this coolant pipe, you can see it's about 60 degrees. If I measure at the thermostat, 55 degrees. But here's the significant part. You see the return pipe over there. There you can see the laser point. Look at the temperature. It's only 32 degrees. So that means that the thermostat is still closed. Therefore, the temperature sensor is still picking up a low temperature and therefore the radiator fan has not engaged yet. There you can see the radiator fan is standing still. When that coolant temperature gets above 100 degrees, we'll see that thermostat open and then the pipe will have flow and that will engage the temperature sensor to activate the radiator fan. Now on most cars your thermostat would have already opened by now but this is a V8 so 95 degrees is still not full operating temperature for this particular V8. This V8 wants I think between 103 and 105. So we need to climb about 10 more degrees before that thermostat is going to open. This pipe is 74, the thermostat body is 60 and the return pipe is 45, so not much coming through there yet. Now the purpose of the electronic control is say for example, it's suddenly going up a hill now. The computer system could then force the thermostat to open prematurely, allowing the engine to cool down, knowing ahead of time that the engine is going to heat up, therefore it can act progressively. And there you can see the radiator fan still disengaged, waiting for the temperature sensor to pick up a temperature that will engage that fan. Right, so the coolant temperature is now at 105 and that thermostat should be operating by now. Right, so on this side I'm getting 85, now look at the return pipe. 
the return pipe has increased its temperature you can see it's now 51 and look at the radiator fan you can see the radiator fan is now engaged which means the thermostat definitely open now the point is is that temperature should not exceed that amount because the thermostat is operating now and the radiator fan is in operation the thermostat may open close open close the point is is that 105 degrees celsius needs to be maintained and that's the purpose of the thermostat function right here's a diagram from Marley's website as you can see there's the engine body and if you have a look at the coolant circuit you can see that the coolant is just running in the engine and it's not going through to the radiator and the purpose of that is the warm-up phase of the engine you want to get the engine to operating temperature as fast as possible so you have lower emissions and better fuel consumption amongst other benefits now what happens is as the temperature of the engine has increased now when the thermostat opens you can see that the entire radiator circuit is added to the loop that allows for the radiator to provide the cooling and that is obviously more efficient and therefore the engine temperature can be controlled using that radiator fan as well. So on the engine, that is why I was showing you the different pipes. In the first setup, it was like it was just in the bypass mode, which meant that the full cooling system was not engaged. That is why the return pipe, when I measured it, was much lower than the pipe connected directly to the engine. But when the engine did reach operating temperature, it now needs to regulate that engine temperature and therefore it needs to allow the coolant to flow into the radiator as well and then when it flows into the radiator that's where the temperature sensor sits to take a measurement to the radiator fan right it's time to switch on but that works on a pwm mechanism which means that the fan is not just going to go on off on off on more sophisticated cars the fan will increase its rotational speed based on the signal it gets from the control unit so obviously if it needs excessive cooling then the fan will be running at a much higher rate if it only needs mild cooling then the fan will then operate at a much slower rate now lastly what is the characteristic of the thermostat that is locked in the open position it's stuck open well in this case the vehicle cannot get over about 70 degrees so the vehicle takes very long to warm up and then even when you're driving it it does increase its temperature but then it keeps going below 70 degrees so the engine is actually running way too cool in this case this is why you need to attend to the thermostat this is most probably a fail-safe operation to make sure that it gets stuck in the open position rather than the closed position you can just imagine if it got stuck in the closed position you'd overheat your engine which could be catastrophic all right i hope this was all helpful and thanks for watching and cheers